what we're currently doing with the power system is we're moving from a centralised system to a decentralised system. And so the question is, how do you manage, um, you know, many, many generators of wind and solar, battery storage, hydro power, you know, across a, a large landscape? So that's a technical problem. Uh, it's one that, you know, many ed energy experts say is completely achievable to do in a sort of 100% renewable energy and, and storage um, situation. Uh, so, yeah, the question is really around how do you how do you manage those different forms of energy at different times of the day? So it's, often people will say, oh, but what if the wind's not blowing? So you say, well, does that mean the sun is not shining anymore? You know, what if the sun's not shining? It's like, well, it might be windy. Or we also have other forms of renewable energy generation, which is, you know, tidal, um, you know, off-river off pumped hydro, um, battery storage. Um, you know, the energy um, Australian Energy Market Operator is is as, is looking very closely at this issue. Um, so they've just released a, a large report recently, um, which was kind of looking at the idea of establishing uh, renewable energy zones. So this would basically look at where are the places in Australia where the resource for wind and solar is the greatest, uh, and how do we how do we unlock those resources? So. Um, it, what we might see in the future is that we have, you know, a num uh, as well as all the renewables that we're developing right now, we also have a number of more remote, um, large-scale renewable energy sites, um, which are basically managed at, like, a sort of almost continental level so that, you know, if, if, the, if wind isn't blowing in Western Victoria, you're importing wind from a part of New South Wales, or you're getting solar thermal from Northern Victoria. Like that, that's achievable, that is doable. Excellent, because that's what's happening in Europe. Mm. And that's why in Denmark, it's so reliable and stable mm. there. Because as you say, when the wind isn't blowing in Denmark, then we can take in, the wind will still be blowing in, yeah. in, in Holland yep. or up in Norway. Yep. Yeah, this is, you know, it, we're, we're basically matching our power system to the weather system and we can adapt to that. And um, the other thing that I would raise is, you know, a, a really exciting development, which is the opportunity for offshore wind in Victoria. So I don't know if you've spoken about this on the program, but... There, I, did, I did mention that, you know, there was this uh, breakthrough price. Once again, you know, we're down to six and a half cent per kilowatt on an offshore wind farm in the mm. US, which is being built right now. And that's beating mm. all prices, mm. you know, yeah, offshore wind. Yeah, exactly. And there's there's actually a project proposed off the Gippsland coast. Uh, I think the title of the, the project is The Star of the South, which is a very epic uh, <laughs> sounding name. Uh, but basically, it's the proposal is for the largest offshore wind energy project in the world. Whoa. Uh, it's pretty crazy. It's If it, if it gets approved, uh, it's predicted to create something like 12,000 jobs. Like, it's a pretty large project. It's basically like building a Hazelwood power station except it's renewables. Yeah, yeah. And the reason that offshore wind is so important is because it's actually windier out on the ocean. Yeah. The wind is more constant. You can build the um, wind towers higher as long as you're not building them in any sensitive eco you know, eco ecosystems. Um, you know, the, the damage is relatively minimal, um, which means you can just... You can access really reliable power. It's like... So... It's it's a really exciting project, um, but there are some there are some questions for you know the federal um, environment minister Josh Frydenberg about this particular project. So, you know, the last couple of weeks we've seen the National Energy Guarantee, this sort of supposed signature energy policy, fall to pieces. Um, you know, that's mm -hmm. basically dead and gone. It's unlikely um, that we'll see another policy put forward by the federal coalition, given what's going on. But there are, that doesn't mean that there aren't decisions to be made about renewables um, mm. in this country. So, um, yeah, the this project was put on the table something like about a year and a half uh, ago. So the state government has said that they're supportive of it. They've done... Yeah. Put it to the feds. What are the, What's the feds' position on offshore wind and this project in Victoria? Because it's got huge benefits. Mm. Green, clean, sustainable Geelong. The sustainable hour.